Who are you and what do you do? My name is Monica Goyle. Uh, I'm a lawyer, entrepreneur, um, and software startup owner. So that sounds like um, a couple of different things there. Uh, a lawyer and an entrepreneur. Some people take a look at that and say that's impossible. How can a lawyer be an entrepreneur? So why don't you explain to me what it is that you do on the entrepreneurial side and is that connected to uh, what you're doing as a lawyer? Yeah. So when I started off, actually, uh, so just backing up, I am an engineer, so I, I graduated from Waterloo in engineering, and after I graduated, um, I graduated into the tech bubble time, and uh, at that time I worked, um, after I graduated I worked in startups, moved to California, worked in the startup, and that was the tech bubble time, so it was a really exciting time, and then went back to school, did my master's at Stanford, and then went to law school. And when I started at law school, I'm just giving this background because it kind of infuses how I got to the entrepreneur piece. But when I started at law school, I was really interested in kind of like access to justice, human rights, you know, uh, you know, the kind of law and order, the public defender type of thing. And when I started practicing, though, when I got into the big firm, what I noticed was two things. One was how inefficient it was. So it was a very different experience from when I had worked in the Nokia's or Toshiba's or Nortel's. Uh, different sense of like kind of innovation and, and uh, you know commitment to kind of you know looking at what you're doing and always kind of trying to um, streamline it and make it more efficient. That was kind of missing in the in my experience in the law firm. Second was uh, looking at what I was being charged at, out at, and I was being charged out at one uh, eighty-five dollars per hour, like just student, didn't know much about the law, and I thought, hmm, there's something wrong here. A, something wrong in that seemed it seemed really really high, and B, that I could never afford myself, and that is a little bit unsettling when you realize that you know there's something here that. You know, you, you're inaccessible to somebody who's even middle class. And so I thought there was, that was about 2008, I thought there was an opportunity, or there's a need kind of in this particular sector for innovation, um, for different types of solutions. Uh, and that's how I kind of started uh, my legal briefcase. So I'm the owner of my legal briefcase. And what that is, is a, um, a software platform for uh, allows people to do agreements, you know, their small claims court, kind of like TurboTax. So it's questionnaire style uh, to kind of, you know, ask you questions based on, you know, how you respond. It it uh, changes, so it's a, it's got a little bit of kind of expertise in it uh, that goes beyond just a standard template form. Fantastic. Now you are also one of the co-organizers and co-founders of uh, Law Tech Camp here in Toronto. Um, why do you feel that this sort of community uh, initiative, this conference initiative, is important to uh, the legal profession, both here in Canada as well as across, both here in Toronto, as well as across Canada and North America? So when I started Law Tech Camp, um, at that time, and, and at the conference that it was also mentioned by James Peters of LegalZoom that in the last couple of years there's been a you know surge of these types of conferences in this particular space. Prior to that there was nothing. So when I started it actually there was nothing in this space. Mm -hmm. um, and to me as a being an entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur is a very lonely experience. It's a very hard, lonely experience. And I was like, well, where's my community? So I was going to a lot of kind of startup events and it was it was inspiring in the sense that um, you know there was this community feel, and there was this like you know kind of ability or this uh, place where you could share your experiences, share learnings of what what you had learned. There's you know it's actually kind of counterintuitive for the legal space because lawyers um, just by the nature of what they do which is they often deal with clients, a lot of their communications, what they do is confidential. So it tends to create a more kind of insular type of 
business environment. You know, people are used to kind of operating in that way. The, the kind of innovation, you know, with the, in my mind, some of the antecedents to innovation is sharing, is learning. You, you don't get innovation without failure in my mind. And by learning, uh, you know, through other people's fail failures or learning from other people's experiences, it just makes it easier for the next person. And so I wanted to have that space or that you know, place where people could come together, they could share what they were doing, talk about what they were doing, talk about, you know, new ideas that they have, um, get conversations kind of going between people. The other thing, the other, you know, um, you know, kind of the apetus behind it was I wanted it to be low cost, I wanted it to be accessible. I mean, the community is such that, you know, a lot of the conferences are, you know, very expensive. A lot of people who are who are innovating in the space are not necessarily the more established lawyers, the older people, it's the younger people. So I wanted a place where, you know, younger people who have got fresh ideas, who aren't still like being in the corporate law environment, um, you know, influenced by those kind of ideas, you know, still kind of fresh, they could come and participate in this as well. And um, so I, I didn't want price to be a barrier. Um, and then the third thing was I wanted it to be more conversational because, you know, the trend is to have people kind of at the podium and like the pundits and they're talking to you from the podium. And there's a lot of people, um, you never know where ideas are going to come from. There's, you know, learnings, there's ideas that can come from anywhere. And so I wanted to have a place where people could do have more of a conversation versus, you know, having that kind of learning, teaching type of model. Um, the other thing that we do is we tend to, you know, a lot, of, a good amount of time, you know, after the event or during the event to for networking. And so it's just kind of building that into that that into the kind of event as well. So, but since then, you know, we've had a lot of people kind of take the idea. Um, there was one in London. Um, the, the people who did the London one have now done it in Silicon Valley. They're thinking of doing it. They've done it in Dubai. They're thinking of doing it in New York. So now we're seeing a lot of movement um, in this space and it's an opportunity for people who are kind of operating this space to kind of keep networking and meeting and seeing what's going on. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you.